Iceland is one of the most highly active geothermal countries in the world. At the Halishady power plant just outside of Reykjavik, steam from underground creates the power, but also brings CO2 with it. Dr. Ada Eridotter is the project manager of CarbFix, pioneering a process to bury that CO2. This power plant, for example, only emits 3% of the CO2 coal burning power plant of the same size emits. Last year, we captured and injected a third of the CO2 emissions from the power plant. So how do they capture CO2? It seems very simple. Steam and hot water are pumped to the surface to generate electricity. The steam drives the turbines and is then cooled and condensed. Gases like carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide from underground are pumped out of the turbine into the scrubber and showered with pure water. Here, CO2 and other gases are dissolved and non-water soluble gases are vented. The CO2 mixture is then piped over to those igloos, which protect the two kilometer deep injection well and equipment from the harsh winter here. Nature plays a big part. Basalt rock is cooled lava and contains calcium, magnesium and iron, which reacts with the CO2 mixture forming solid calcium carbonate in the rocks. So this is a core mm -hmm. we drilled into the storage formation a few years back. And then we have the white veins and spots in between, and that's mineralized CO2. And uh, it turns out that what we inject is turned into rock like this in less than two years. So it's a very efficient and effective process, permanently getting rid of CO2. Iceland is now looking at applying this technology to heavy industrial plants. Wherever there is basalt rock, this process can work. It's the most common rock type on Earth, covering around 10% of continents. And most areas within the ocean basins are underlined by basalt. On a big scale, we looked at all of the oceanic ridges of course, it's probably not economically to do it, but you could take all the CO2 from burning of all fossil fuel that we know of on Earth. But the ocean can have one big advantage, the large amount of water needed for this process. It takes around 25 tons to convert one ton of CO2. So Professor Gislason is eyeing this abundant resource to test the CO2 mineralization in seawater. What we're doing is just a drop in the bucket. Presently, we are emitting about 40 gigatons per year of CO2. We have to be extremely focused to get going, to capture CO2 as fast as we can. And then later on, in the second half of the century, we have to clean it from air because we're not doing it fast enough.